everyone. Welcome. I'm Daniel Roth. I'm a program manager on the ASP.NET team for Blazor. And in this session, we're going to look at how you can build native client apps using your .NET web development skills with Blazor Hybrid. Over four years ago, Blazor was introduced to the open source community as a way to build full stack web apps with .NET. No JavaScript required. With Blazor, you can use .NET to build rich, interactive web UI components based purely on open web standards, HTML, CSS, and WebAssembly. Blazor is part of ASP.NET Core, your modern unified .NET web framework. Blazor sits alongside your other favorite ASP.NET Core technologies to handle all of your web development needs. This past November, we shipped a huge number of Blazor improvements with .NET 6, the latest .NET long-term support release. These Blazor improvements include hot reload, smaller download sizes for Blazor WebAssembly apps, WebAssembly ahead of time compilation, uh, the ability to link in native dependencies, error boundaries, dynamic component rendering, uh, the ability to render Blazor components from your JavaScript apps, and much, much more. You can get started with Blazor in .NET 6 LTS uh, to build your next great web app by going to blazor.net. Now, Blazor currently supports two different hosting models for web apps. The first we call Blazor Server. In a Blazor Server app, your components run on the server and handle UI interactions and DOM updates over a real-time uh, connection with the browser. Your, the second hosting model we call Blazor WebAssembly. In a Blazor WebAssembly app, your components run in the browser on a WebAssembly-based .NET runtime that is downloaded with your app. All UI interactions and DOM updates are handled directly on the client. Regardless of how uh, you host your Blazor components, which Blazor hosting model you use, the way you write your Blazor components is exactly the same. The same components can be hosted either way. Sometimes, though, building a web app isn't enough. What if you need access to native platform capabilities that aren't available through the web platform? In short, what if you need a native app? Well, if you're a web developer, building a native app can seem a little bit daunting. Uh, fortunately, you can now reuse your existing web development skills to build native client apps using Blazor. In short, Blazor is expanding beyond the web. .NET MAUI is the future of cross-platform UI for .NET. With .NET MAUI, you can build a single app that runs on mobile and desktop, Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. It's the evolution of Xamarin Forms with an improved architecture and development experience. .NET MAUI released earlier this month and is now available for production app development. .NET MAUI also makes it easy for web developers to create native client apps by integrating with Blazor using a hybrid approach, a hybrid of native and web. .NET MAUI enables you to embed Blazor web UI components directly into your .NET MAUI apps. By using .NET MAUI and Blazor together, you can reuse one set of web UI components across mobile, desktop, and the web. Here's how it works. Uh, .NET MAUI will execute your Blazor components directly in the .NET MAUI app and render them to an embedded web view control through a, a local interop channel. Your Blazor components run natively on the device. WebAssembly isn't involved. This means your Blazor components run fast, and they have full access to the native uh, capabilities of the device through the .NET platform. We call this hosting model Blazor Hybrid. Blazor, Hi Blazor Hybrid apps let you use your .NET web skills to build native client apps with web UI components that can then be shared with your web apps. Let me show you what building a Blazor hybrid app with .NET MAUI looks like. OK, so to get started with .NET MAUI and Blazor, you're going to need the latest Visual Studio Preview with the mobile uh, Visual Studio workload installed. Let me show you that. So here's the Visual Studio installer. You're going to want this workload, the mobile desk, uh, development with .NET workload. And if you select that, that should then get you uh, access to .NET MAUI, which the, the tooling is still in preview. But .NET MAUI is now released. Great. So once you've got that, we can then create our first .NET MAUI Blazor project. Let's select MAUI. 
And this is the template we're gonna use, this .NET MAUI Blazor app template. This is just a normal .NET MAUI project, but with Blazor already set up so we can uh, render our Blazor components. Let's go ahead and create that. That looks like a good name, good name for our .NET MAUI Blazor app. And there it is. Okay, so this is a single project. This is our .NET MAUI project, which is set up to multi-target Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Okay, we can go ahead and get this running. We're gonna run it on Android first. That'll take a second while it deploys to the Android emulator. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So the main page for our .NET MAUI app is in here in mainpage.xaml. In MAUI, you use XAML syntax to author native UI, to use native components. Uh, in this case, if you're running on Android, you're gonna get Android native components. If you're running on Windows, you'll get native Windows components uh, using WinUI 3. In this particular app, though, we only really have one .NET MAUI control, which is this Blazor WebView control. This is what's going to render our Blazor components in the .NET MAUI app to an embedded WebView. You can see we've specified a single, there's, a, there's our app, it's about, about ready to run. There's our single uh, root component, and we're pointing to this main component. This is how you specify a, a .NET type in XAML syntax. Where's this main component coming from? Well, right here, main.razor. We've got razor files in our .NET MAUI project. We open that up. Uh, if you've ever worked with a Blazor app before, before, hopefully this looks familiar. This is just the standard Blazor router that will take care of routing browser navigations to our routable Blazor components, which are all set up in the pages directory up here in our project. So here we've got index.razor, we've got counter.razor, and this is literally character for character, the same code that you would see in a Blazor web application, but now being used inside of native client apps using .NET MAUI. And then of course we got fetch data, which will render a table of, uh, of weather forecast data. Okay, so this should be running by now. Let's go to see, and there it is. Here is our Blazor app. We've got the home page, we've got the counter, the count goes up, we've got the fetch data page, which shows the weather. And this is Blazor Web UI being rendered in a native Android application. So Web UI in a native app, that's Blazor hybrid, that hybrid approach. This of course will work on Windows as well. Let's switch it over to, to Windows. And we'll go ahead and run this on Windows too. Now, when MAUI runs on Windows, we're gonna use WinUI 3, so you're getting the latest platform uh, UI stack and features. There it goes. Okay, now we have a .NET MAUI Blazor app running as a Windows desktop app, right alongside our native Android app. And if we had a Mac set up, we could also get this running for iOS using the iOS simulator, and even running on Mac OS using Mac Catalyst. We get desktop and mobile using web UI. That's pretty cool. Now, because we've taken our Blazor components and embedded them into native client apps, we can now use native client features. For example, we could use native UI elements alongside our web UI, um, uh, our web-based user interface. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So right now we have this web-based a uh, set of tabs on the, the left nav. Uh, these are all you know, set up using HTML and bootstrap-based styling. But let's say instead of web UI, I actually wanna turn those into native tabs, like use the, uh, the native tab control from the underlying stack. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna, uh, let's minimize this and let's go back into mainpage.xaml. Instead of a content page for, the, for this particular page, let's switch this to a tabbed page. And I think I have to also change this in the uh, code behind file. So let's go into here and change the base type for main page to be a tab page. Good, that allows us to have some tabs. And now I need to have a content page for each of my tabs. So let's set up that. So these are gonna be native UI controls. I'm just gonna take my Blazor web view and dump it inside of that content page. There we go. All right, and then I want to have three of these, one for each of my pages. So I'm gonna that one and that one. I'm just gonna copy it three times. Now for the first tab, instead of going to main, I'm gonna have it go directly to like the homepage, the index. I'm gonna need to set up a namespace for that. Let's do XMLNS, call this pages for our pages namespace, where our components live. There they are, okay. So now we should be able to go down here and switch this to pages index. There we go. And then we'll switch the second one to pages counter. And then we'll switch the third one 
to pages uh, fetch data. Awesome. Okay. Um, I also want to change this background color from purple to white just so that we don't get any purple borders around anything. Let's do that as well. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we got. All right, okay, we're getting somewhere. So we do now have this uh, native set of tabs up top. There's no text showing up because we didn't specify any titles. But hopefully if I click around, find the right spot, there it is. I can't even see where this spot is. You can see that there are in fact three tabs there so we can get to all three of our pages. Let's, let's fix this up a bit. I'm gonna snap this over to the side with Visual Studio and let's give ourselves a little bit more room and let's uh, set up those titles. So we'll go into the first tab. We'll set the title to be uh, home. Let me go ahead and save that. Shows up immediately thanks to uh, XAML Hot Reload. Dot in Maui supports XAML Hot Reload, so we can do that. Let's uh, do um, counter for the second tab. And for the third tab, we'll say, change this to be weather. Great. So now all our tabs are showing up, and they're much easier to click, and they look great. And we can see all three of our tabs. Um, we probably should have a little bit of border around these pages. They're kind of uh, right up against the edge. Let's set padding to 10. And we'll do that on all three pages as well. Save that. And now when we go to a different tab, yeah, we get a nice little bit of padding. So here we've got a WinUI 3 tabbed view for our desktop application, which looks great. Um, we can do it for uh, mobile as well. So if we go and run this on back on the Android emulator, let's switch this back to our emulator we should see that we get native controls on Android too. So let's give that a second, and it should deploy pretty quickly uh, the second time through. There it is. Yeah, okay, and here we're getting Android tabs. And they, they look a little different, and that's because we're getting the look and feel of Android for our tabs. But for each of these tabs, we have our Blazor WebView control sitting alongside native UI. So you can mix as much native UI and web UI as you want within the, the same application. You can do both. Uh, we can also use native platform functionality as well. We're not just limited to, to native UI. This is a native app, so we can call into uh, functionality that the device provides. Um, things that would might be really hard to do on the web or might even be impossible to do, to do on the web just because it's not functionality that the, the web exposes. Uh, for example, let's let's go into this home page and I'll, I'll open up uh, index.razor again. And what I want to do is I want to add a button onto this page. I'm just going to go ahead and add it. And what I want this button to do is to check the internet status for this application. Technically, I think this is you, you could do this with the web, like you could go call into a browser API. But what I want to do in this app is I'm going to use native platform APIs through .NET MAUI to figure out if the, the app actually has network uh, connectivity. OK, and so let's set up a code block in here so we can implement our check internet method. And I'm just going to copy in a snippet to make that easy and I'll walk you through what this code does. OK, so now we've got oh, app code. There we go. So we've got our check internet method. And this is Maui app one. Uh, in Check Internet, we're going to use this connectivity API, which is one of the many APIs that Maui provides that uh, give you access to platform functionality in a cross-platform way. Uh, there's connectivity, there's barometer, there's the compass, battery, all these things. Maui just gives you uh, fingertip access using uh, nice .NET APIs for uh, uh, getting this functionality. Here I'm using connectivity. I'm going to figure out if there's network access. If we've got internet, then this will return true, otherwise false. And then we're also going to query to figure out what type of internet connection we've got. We'll go through all the connection profiles. We'll just look at the first one and see if it's you know wi uh, Wi-Fi or cellular or whatever. If it's not, uh, if there isn't one there, then there is uh, there isn't a known uh, uh, internet connection. And then we're going to use a native uh, alert to display the state of the, the network connection uh, to the user. So we'll have a title and then say whether or not it has internet or not. OK, so that should be it. Let's go ahead and rerun that on Android. There it goes. OK, so we got our app. We got our check internet button if we click it. Now we're getting a native alert. So this is native UI, and it's not actually binding to my uh, to my variables. What did I do wrong there? I, uh, oh, I messed up my <laughs> I messed up my uh, string interpolation. Let's fix that. So we'll save that and we'll redeploy one more time. All right, now let's see if we have any internet. And there it is. Yes, we have internet. And in this case, the uh, Android emulator is simulating a cellular connection. Uh, we can simulate also uh, losing that connection by going up here into the settings. 
Let's turn on airplane mode. And we'll put this back up. And then we'll check the internet status again. And now false, we don't have internet anymore. So it's in the, uh, the type of the internet is unknown. So by using Maui and Blazor together from our Blazor web UI components, we can even access native platform features. I'm going to turn airplane mode back off. Otherwise, I always, always forget to do that. All right, cool. So we've seen that with Maui and Blazor together, we can build UI. We can use native capabilities of the device. What's really cool about this model is that you can now reuse any of your existing Blazor components within a native client app within a .NET Maui application. You know, as a really simple example, let's go ahead and right-click on this solution. Let's just add, a, you know, a, a, a Blazor component library, go web, and let's pick Razor. We'll add a Razor class library to this project. That sounds like a reasonable name for our Razor class library. This just has a single simple component, component one, which is just going to render a div. It's got a little bit of styling. And all I'm going to do is just reference that project from my .NET Maui app, Razor class library one. And then let's go back into index.razor. Right above our button, we'll do razor class library one and render component one right in here. And we'll go ahead and re execute that. It's taking a second. But what this is going to do is it should show me a component from like a component library that I've built previously and then I want to reuse in this application. Awesome. Okay, there it is. So now you can see we've got our component that from a you know existing component library we just had sitting around that's now rendering within our .NET Maui Blazor apps, picking up all the styles and images from that library as well. We can even take this all the way to using an entire web application inside a .NET Maui application. You can take a, a Blazor web app and turn it into a native client app. Um, let me show you that. Instead of this uh, simple application, let's switch to a more real-world sample. I've got this uh, uh, .NET podcast sample application that's um, been built with .NET Maui, but also with Blazor for, for web. So we've got a web version of this app. I'm going to go ahead and start. Popped up here on my other screen. Now, here it is. Okay, so this is a... Uh, web app for listening to various .NET, uh, .NET podcasts. This home page is all implemented with ASP.NET Core and, and Razor. So this is all being server rendered. If we click, click on sign in and go to the actual podcast player. This is all Blazor. So we've got rich interactive UI. We can like search for podcasts. Here's a Maui podcast. We can click on that. We can play a podcast right here in the browser. Oh yeah, sounds good. Definitely going to want to listen to that one later. I can flag stuff to listen to later, and it shows up on my listen later list. We've got settings where we can like toggle, uh, toggle <laughs> dark mode and light mode. You know, this is a fully featured, rich web application, all built with Blazor and .NET. But let's say I want to actually now turn this into a native client app. I want a native mobile application for my podcast player or a, a desktop application. How can we do that? Well, with, with Blazor, that's just super simple. We can take this app and just wrap it in a .NET Maui application. You may have noticed I've already got a uh, Maui project up here at the top. And this project is referencing exactly the same components that are used by the web apps. You see it's got this podcast pages uh, project reference. That's down here. And podcast pages is where all of the pages of our web application are, are implemented. If we go look at the... Um, the, uh, the Blazor WebAssembly part of the app and look at its dependencies, it's referencing exactly the same project. So literally the same components, but now we're going to uh, use them inside of a .NET Maui app. If we look at mainpage.xaml, again, it's just got that single Blazor web view control pointing to our main component, which will then wrap to the pages that, we're, that are being used by our web application. So let's go ahead and switch to that. Let's go over to .NET Pods Maui Blazor, and let's run this on Android first. And hopefully we should be able to see a native Android app now for our uh, uh, .NET Podcast application. There it goes. All right, cool. And there it is. So this is actually all web UI. This is, these are our Blazor web UI components now rendering inside of an Android native app. And we can do desktop too. Let's switch back over to Windows. Let's see this running as a Windows desktop app. Get the mobile app back up. All right, yes. So we've got desktop, uh, and we can do it like that, let's see. And then we got mobile, and of course, 
they've got the original web application that we had before. So mobile, desktop, and web, all with one set of web UI components. Super duper cool. And you can tell that this is actually using our web user interface. If we go into the like the desktop app, let's just bring up the, the browser dev tools. So they pop up right here. Well, it's a little big, let me make it a little smaller. And we can then like use the inspector uh, to like see that yeah, these are all HTML elements that are being rendered by Blazor. So this is all web UI being used in a hybrid fashion with a native client app. Super awesome. All right, let me close that down. Let me hop back over here to slides. Okay, now we've seen how .NET Maui and Blazor together let you build modern client apps using your web development skills. Um, but the Blazor hybrid pattern isn't just limited to .NET Maui and to new applications. You can use Blazor components anywhere that you can run .NET code that you that can also have a web view to render them to. So for example, you can use Blazor hybrid with existing Windows desktop apps like WPF and WinForms apps. This can be a great way to modernize the UI of existing apps. Uh, the UI for this uh, legacy point of sale app for dry cleaning establishments, that was uh, completely redone by this company, uh, Spot by Explorer, using Blazor so that it could ena enable them to take their existing desktop app and uh, turn it into a web application. This is something that the Blazor hybrid pattern now enables. You can add Blazor web UI components to your existing Windows desktop apps a piece at a time or wholesale as a way to then modernize that app uh, that will work on the web or work with .NET MAUI. Let me show you what I mean. Let's uh, hop back into Visual Studio. And I've got an uh, existing uh, WPF application. Let's think it's this one. All right, here we go. So this is a WPF app. And if we look at main window.xaml for this application, we can see it's just a single window. And it's got a web view inside of it. We're using WebView 2, the latest web view for uh, Windows. And if we look at the XAML for the app, uh, it's got a grid, and inside that grid, we again just have a single Blazor web view control. Now, this is this is different XAML than a .NET MAUI uh, app XAML. This is WPF XAML, but it's very, very similar in terms of the pattern. We use a Blazor web view control. We specify what root components we want to use, and here we're specifying main again, and there's our main.razor file. So we've got razor files inside of our WPF app. If we run this, now we've got a WPF desktop app that's rendering Blazor inside of it. We got our Blazor counter and fetch data controls just like normal. So that's pretty cool. You can use this to, to modernize existing WPF apps. Uh, and we can do it with Windows Forms too. Let me let me uh, open another project, uh, this Blazor WinForms project. All right, cool. So in this project, we have a single form. And if we open up the code for this guy, now in WinForms, we uh, we use don't use YAML. We use just use code and uh, the, the WinForms designer to add our controls. But here you can see we've added a Blazor WebView control, this uh, Blazor WebView one. And we're setting up this time using just code patterns, normal C Sharp. So we're setting the host page and the services that we want to use. And there's our root components. There's our main component showing up as a generic parameter. And we're uh, specifying where in the root HTML the, of the of the app do we want that main component to render. And main.razor is there just like in the WPF application. So we can go ahead and run this. And now we've got a Windows Forms app that's rendering our Blazor content. So whether you're doing WPF, WinForms, or .NET MAUI, uh, if you have uh, existing Blazor code or web development skills that you want to reuse, you can now use those in those applications. This could be a great way to, to modernize existing apps. All right. So now that Blazor hybrid support for .NET MAUI, WPF, and WinForms is released and ready to be used for production apps, uh, we're starting work on delivering the next wave of Blazor improvements for .NET 7. Here's a, a brief overview of what we've got planned. Uh, hot reload improvements. We shipped hot reload support in .NET 6 for all of the UI app models, including Blazor. We're working on a number of improvements for hot reload for Blazor, particularly Blazor WebAssembly, to enable more types of edits uh, and to enable hot reload even when you're operating underneath the, the, the debugger. Uh, mixed mode AOT, uh, WebAssembly ahead of time compilation. Again, another feature that we shipped in .NET 6, but it was kind of all or nothing. You either ahead of time compiled the entire app 
or just the, or none of it. In .NET 7, what we want to do is enable you to ahead of time compile just the parts that you want to get that additional runtime performance for, so you can uh, appropriately trade off the increase in app size with better runtime performance. Uh, ahead of time uh, uh, compiled code is going to get much more performant in .NET 7. We've already made a bunch of improvements there with the exist existing .NET 7 previews that you should check out. Uh, we are planning to add multi-threading support to Blazor WebAssembly in .NET 7, which we're really excited about. So you can have multi-threaded code uh, running in the browser, thanks to the, the latest uh, open web standards. Uh, we're adding web crypto support based on the subtle crypto APIs uh, in the browser. We also want to enable uh, running .NET code on WebAssembly without Blazor UI really necessarily being in the picture. So for example, if you have a .NET library that you just want to be able to reuse from an existing JavaScript application, that's something that we're looking at enabling in .NET 7, just being able to call generically into .NET code uh, without necessarily even having any Blazor UI components. Uh, we did work in .NET 6 to enable building uh, custom H HTML elements with Blazor components. Uh, it's still in preview in .NET 7. We're going to productize that work and make and ship a stable release. Uh, if you're building micro front end style applications, you might want to have multiple Blazor apps uh, sitting in the same uh, the same page or the same the same view. Uh, we're looking at enabling that in in .NET 7. There are a number of improvements for Blazor server apps that we'd hope to do in .NET 6 that we didn't get to that we're looking to do in .NET 7, like being able to pause and resume. Uh, your, your Blazor server um, circuits and having more control over the, the circuit lifetime, like being able to shut them down early or gracefully uh, uh, um, shut, uh, bring them down. Um, we're doing some improvements for pre-rendering so that you can uh, do pre-rendering with authentication. Uh, and then we have some data binding improvements. We're hoping to ship uh, uh, some cleaned up templates so that uh, if you want to start from an, a clean, empty slate, uh, you can do so. And of course, we continue to make improvements into Razor and the Razor editor uh, in Visual Studio. For more details on the roadmap for ASP.NET Core and for Blazor in .NET 7, please check out the link below, aka.ms slash ASP.NET slash roadmap. With that, I hope you've enjoyed learning about building native client apps with Blazor Hybrid and .NET MAUI. Be sure to give it a try and let us know what, what you think about the experience. Thanks for listening and happy coding. <laughs>